I'm Gary at GB Educator and today I'm going to be presenting Circle Theorem. So when we're talking about Circle Theorem we're talking about using some uh, set of set rules um, to actually find out maybe some missing angles or side lengths within some circle problems. Three facts about uh, circles that we need to know. First one is that if we've got an angle between the radius and a tangent it's always going to be 90 degrees. It's always going to be perpendicular from the tangent. If we've got two tangents coming away from the circle, so touching the outside of the circumference of the circle and meeting at a point, then these two tangents are going to be equal length. And the final one is that if we've got a triangle inside of our circle where we've, it's formed by two radius or radii and then these have joined up to form a triangle, this is going to be an isosceles triangle. So both of our side lengths are going to be equal, which they will be because they're both radii, and the angles at A and B are going to be equal. So the rules that we need to know. First one, we've got uh, the right angles in a semicircle. So anytime we've got a diameter, obviously a line touching the circumference going through the center of the circle, and either side of the diameter touching the circumference to form a triangle, it's going to form a right angle. If we've got a perpendicular line from a chord to the center of the circle, this is going to bisect the chord. This is going to split the chord in half. Any time that, uh, that we've got uh, almost like, a, like this V shape, sorry, this um, arrowhead shape, we can safely assume that the angles at the center of the circle is going to be twice the size of the angle at the circumference of the circle. Anytime that you see this bow tie type shape, the angles within the same segment are the same. We can assume that they are the same angle. So you're looking at the same corners in the same region of the bow ties. We've got the alternate segment theorem. So this is uh, saying that if we've got a tangent meeting a um, triangle formed within a um, within a circle, we can safely assume that angle Y here is going to be the same as angle Y there. Angle X is going to be the same as angle X there because it's going to form 180 degrees where this angle is common to both. And our other one is our angles in a cyclic quadrilateral. So by this, we are saying that if we've got angle X, our angle opposite this has got to be 180, take away this angle on the opposing side. So D will be 180, take away X. So working with these, uh, um, with, uh, with a couple of examples to try and find some of the missing sides. So angle A just here, we can say that this is 37 degrees, which is the same as the angle just here, because we've got two radii, which has gone and formed an isosceles triangle. Angles at the base of an isosceles are equal. Angle B just here is going to be 53 degrees because of angles in a semicircle, because here we've formed, we've got a diameter, and we've got lines coming from the diameter, which is forming a triangle. So it's formed 90 degrees here. So B has got to be what is left over from 90, take away the 37. C here is got to be 53 also, because yet again, we've got two radius coming away from here, in which case we've got an isosceles triangle yet again. Angle B, all the angles within a triangle equal 180 degrees. So if we use that fact, 180 take away 2 times 53 leaves me with 74. And I've used angles in the triangle as my reasoning for this. And I've done the exact, uh, exact same for, oh sorry, no, I've used angles on the straight line for E. So here I've got a straight line. So I've taken 180, take away 74, which is my D, which has left me with 53 angles on the straight line being my reason for this. A bit of a different problem for you here. So to calculate A, again, I've gone in and used the idea of an isosceles triangle, angles at a base of an isosceles, so this will be 29. 
For B, I've gone and taken these away from 180 to give me 122. For C, angles at the, at the centre are twice that of the base. So I've halved my 122, which has left me with 61, which is going to be my angle for C. And angle O, I've gone and used the fact that I've got a angles um, around a point here. So 360 take away 122. That's left me angle O here of being 238 which means I'm left with a quadrilateral shape just here, a four-sided shape. All angles in the quadrilateral add up to 360 degrees. So I've taken away my three angles away from 360, which has left me with angle D being 20 degrees. Now we've got a, got a box, a box shape just here. So what I'm gonna do, first of all, to work out angle A, we've used angles in a semicircle. So here we've got our semi um, our diameter <laughs> going through the center and we've got two lines coming away from here in which case that's formed a right angle triangle. So 90 take away the 51 that's left me with 39 degrees for A. For B what I've done I've gone and taken my angles in the triangle so I've got I've used this big triangle just here. So I've used the fact that I've got 90 degrees here, 44 degrees there, taking those away from 180. So I've got 46 degrees for my angle B. For my angle C, I've gone and chosen this as 46 degrees also, because here I've actually got my bow tie shape, in which case I can say that angle B is the same as angle C. So this is 46 degrees. And using the exact same for D, I can say that this angle here has got to be the same as this angle here. So this is also 51 degrees. If you like what you see, please make sure you subscribe. Thank you very much for watching.